All right, so I've got a problem here. I'm going to uh, show how we walk through the problem in our given. So I've got this piston cylinder. It's fitted with a set of stops. It's initially, the air is initially at 25 degrees Celsius and 100 kilopascals. It undergoes a constant pressure process until that air has expanded to a final volume of one meter cubed. That's the maximum possible volume that it could be at. But then it's further heated to 80 degrees Celsius um, still at a volume of one meter cube because those stops prevent any further expansion from occurring. So if I look at A, B, C, D, E, and F, well clearly it state, uh, clearly the temperature of the air when the piston head hits the stops, that's at state two. The final pressure is at state three. The process from two to three is the constant pressure process. The process from two to three is the constant volume process. It tells me I can assume that air behaves as an ideal gas, but I can verify that that was a good assumption, or if I was asked to do so on a test, I could do that using my reduced temperature. If the reduced temperature is greater than two, or the reduced pressure is less than 0.1, or the Z value is, le uh, is greater than 0.9, I can assume it's an ideal gas in this class. And clearly, the reduced temperature that I calculate is greater than 2. And that's very convenient because I can tell from state 1 to state 3 that temperature is just going to keep going up. So since the reduced temperature at 1 is greater than 2, then the reduced temperature at 2 and 3 are also going to be greater than 2. So it's an ideal gas at all three states. Since it's an ideal gas, I might as well use the ideal gas law to find T2. I plug and chug, and I get a 348.43 Kelvin. Then I can do the same thing for the pressure at three. Apply my ideal gas law at three, plug and chug, I've got all those variables, and I calculate my answer in kilopascals. For part C, I'm asked to find the heat transfer, and so I'm gonna apply my first law for a closed system between states one and states two. Got Q minus W equals delta U plus delta kinetic energy plus delta potential energy, all in units of energy, not energy per unit mass. My kinetic energy and potential energy terms, I can go ahead and assume are equal to zero. And so I've got Q minus W equals delta big U, and I might wanna put that in terms of M delta little u. And that W can be, well, that's my boundary work, right? I have no other work that's being going that's going on except expansion work from one to two. And so the integral of PDV, because that pressure is constant, he comes right out of the integral. The integral of DV is just delta V. And of course, all of this, I could put that in terms of specific volume. And of course, all of this is equal to M delta little u. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the delta u and the P delta V together because that's the definition of enthalpy. And that's really convenient because all I have to do is look in those ideal air tables and pull out those H1 and those H2 values. It does require a little bit of interpolation, but not too bad. And then it's just a plug and chuck and I've got my Q from one to two. Now, of course, for part D, I had already derived the equation for the work and I just need to plug and chug. I'm not gonna put it in terms of specific volume. I'm gonna leave it in volume uh, because I've got V1 and, well, let's see, I don't have V1, but I do have V2 and I can, I can derive an equation for V1 by just applying my first law, which is what I'm going to do here. And if I just plug and chug, I get a work of 14.474 kilojoules. Now I'm on to part E, which requires me to find the work for the constant volume process. And well, because there's no volume change, there's no boundary work, and there's no other type of work going on. So my work is equal to zero. And then for part F, I need to find the heat transfer from two to three. I don't have any work. I don't have any kinetic and potential energy changes. They're assumed to be zero. And so now I've got my delta big U equals M delta little U. And all I need to do is look up the U3 and the U2 values at T2 and T3. Once again, it does require a little bit of interpolation. Oh, and those should be U values, not H. It should say, should say U, not H. Um, but those are, my, those are my values for my U values. So once again, in that table, it should say you, um, it, it, but it just take it that it is you. Um, and I plug and chug and I get, uh, I get my Q value from one, uh, from two to three. Sorry about that. All right. Well, I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching and let me know if you have any questions.